I've had a bunch of years up is that it, you know, they get faster every year. So pretty soon, you know, we'll be at the stage where you can use this in, uh, in games. Um, the other things to see here is there's a couple of columns here which we put in to show the fact that the, the fire is interacting with these uh, objects. You can see it kind of flow around the columns. Um, if I pause it here, you can see the, the volume rendering a little bit uh, more closely. Uh, we have a kind of heat haze effect, which you might be able to see in, in some areas. But yeah, the setup here is actually very simple. There's just a single uh, cone emitter attached to the dragon's mouth, and that's injecting uh, fuel and temperature into the simulation. Uh, and you can see the kind of expansion that Nussbaum was talking about in the combustion model is what's kind of producing these cool uh, kind of fireball effects. Oh yeah, and then there's, there's one kind of emitter in his nostrils as well, just for effect. So you you may you add too much, so in a way that's good. So if you want to export, you, you can add it, but it's not because the method is broken. And and the other thing is, what kind of interpolation are you actually doing on the simulation? Are you doing just a linear interpolation on the actual cells? Yeah, we, we, we do trilinear, just so right now. But, but you can replace it with like the base as well. But it's not very needed, I think, because you can you can add what is it even five minutes, and that kind of give you similar effect and cheaper. Yeah, it's, it's actually an interesting question with the stability. Is that we obviously we haven't really integrated this into many games yet. And so in a game. You know, you don't know how quick things are going to be moving. You know, collision objects and stuff. So we we may have issues once we start doing that. But I imagine we could put in you know clamps for to, to control the maximum velocity to, to avoid that problem. So what parts of the simulation pipeline are physically motivated? What parts are artistically motivated? It seems like the vorticity uh, amplification is for for the making an interesting simulation as opposed to a realistic one. Is that right? Well, actually, it's it's. From physics, computational physics as well, like the vorticity confinement is physical. Like I mean, you can you can make it so that it converts to true solution. But I mean, you can optionally do it in a way that that's not physical, like adding too much vorticity compared to physical solution. But but it is all physically motivated. Flow through those, but it is a good question if you had a you know more complicated. Uh, you know, dynamic character, and if you wanted to do accurate collisions, how would you do that? And it's it's quite a difficult problem to generate a slight distance field for a completely dynamic uh, triangle mesh. Um, but yeah, that's something we'd like to like to try doing. But in practice, you can get away with with bounding volumes pretty well for most characters. You can just use capsules and spheres, and that, that works well enough. Yeah, and, and it's kind of independent of, of this technique. There's a lot of work in estimating yeah. high distance field. Well, we just did implement it, but you could bring it and then implement it. Okay, thank you very much.